Hi again and guys and welcome to another Gran Turismo Sports Circuit tune in particular and as with most if not all of my road based tunes this can be reworked or reused based on if you need it to be balance of performance or if you want to enter a custom match and to be fair you don't actually have to upgrade the power and weight at all you could just do the settings and leave the power and weight stock if you want to. Now what I've done is I've dropped the weight as much as you can because the car in question, which was actually a requested vehicle, I mean, let's be honest, it's horrendous. It's pretty well known that the Veneno is a ridiculously bad car, far worse than it arguably should be. The brakes are awful, it wallows around like a muscle car from the 60s, and that's an insult to muscle cars from the 60s because some of those are pretty good. It's extremely heavy, and just in the real world, it's not as quick as a car like this should be anyway. Now, in the game, you can improve it, but I will say, word to the wise, don't expect this car to beat everything else in whatever category you use it in, because there are very few cars that can make a Veyron look nimble, but this one manages that. So, I've dropped the weight as much as you can, way down to the super lightweight 1250 kilos, which isn't exactly good, but I've also dropped the power. And the reason for that is because N600 is actually kind of a more appropriate level based on the car's ability. Whereas up in, say, N1000, this thing doesn't stand a chance against a LaFerrari. It can't even outrun the SEMA show muscle cars, let alone another supercar. Now, you can adjust the power, as I said, if you want to, but I wouldn't recommend it. Traction control, you definitely want turned off. You don't want anything slowing you down even more. As far as tyres, we've got it on sports softs. Of course, racing tyres will be a whole lot better. But again, I wanted to see what it would be like in more realistic circumstances. As far as suspension, you want it 5mm above the lowest height, 65 on the front, 75 on the back. You could lower the front even more if you want to. It's got a little bit of a slammed back end, as some supercars do have. As far as the frequency, we've got that on 225. Anti-roll on 6. You could try dropping that to 5 if you want to, just to loosen it up a little bit through corners. For compression on the dampers, I've increased that to 58, 86 on rebound. Neutral camber, definitely on this one. Neutral toe as well. You can adjust the downforce on it. As far as the diff, I've got, as you can see, the lowest initial torque and then the highest all-round for both acceleration and braking. And again, that's to loosen it up. It's a very heavy car through corners. And as far as the gearbox, it's not too important because I've reduced the power anyway, but I've got an auto setting of 205 and then left the rest as is. So there is tons of room for variation. You could repurpose it to N700, N1000, you know, whatever you want to do. But to see what it's actually capable of, let's take it out to the same circuit where I reviewed the car months ago, Suzuka. Now, as I said, I would not recommend using this car. <laughs> and unfortunately, that has to be said, because most supercars can be worked with, they can be worked around, and I'm sure that this car has its fans. Every car does. And I'm not the kind of person who recommends not buying certain vehicles. And even when it comes to this car, it's still a collector's piece and it is unique in the game, so I can't recommend not buying it. It's not like a chrome line or a stealth, which doesn't have any purpose. But at the same time, don't expect too much of this thing. It's all show, barely any go, compared to many other supercars. And the two biggest and most important pieces of advice that I would give anyone trying to use this tune, regardless of the power level, is one, brake early and brake hard. Because the brakes on this thing are awful. This car alone supports the argument of needing race brakes in the game. The second thing, and this is at least as important, it's directly tied into that, also to do with braking, is do not brake and turn if at all possible. Because as I said, this thing is so heavy, it gets even worse under braking, regardless of having ABS on or off. As soon as you try and brake and turn at the same time, you can feel the stupid amount of weight in this thing, even when it's lightened, just hurtling you off of the course like a meteor coming into Earth's atmosphere. It's a ridiculously bad handling car. So this tune is purely because it was requested for those who maybe are wrestling with trying to use the car more, would like to use it more. This at least can give you a little bit of a leg up on that so that you could, I don't know, take on some cars if you want to, maybe just in career mode if nothing else. But that's it for this tune. 
if you're new to the channel, trust me, most of them are better than this. <laughs> it doesn't exactly give you much to work with, this car. So if you'd like to check out other tunes that I've done, click through at the end to see those. But for now, as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>